You know, it's one thing to talk about it, but again, when you can validate this kind of information with science, and that's what Dr. Alvin Berger has done, right? When it comes to oil, he's researched this. He spent his entire career researching oil, and he's gonna teach us about an oil that I bet no one has ever heard of before. Well, take a look at this. I am so excited that you're here today. Thank you so very much. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself and your name? Yeah, my name is Alvin Berger. I've been in nutrition research for the last 30 years. Educationally, I have a bachelor's and then a master's in aquaculture and fish nutrition. I have a PhD in human nutrition, specializing in fat metabolism. And then I did a postdoctoral fellowship at Georgetown University in molecular cell signaling of lipids. Then I went on to work for a number of both large and small companies such as Nestle and Cargill over a long career. And I'm also an adjunct professor at two universities. It's remarkable. So the unusual conifer type of fatty acids, the skiadonic acid. Okay, so a pretty wide breadth of oils re relative to other people who are lipid specialists. But the the conifer oils are a particular uh, a passion to mine, and that led to the creation of the company Skiadonics Incorporated. And so, if you start looking at you know before we had let's call it modern medicine, you know cultures around the world, American Indians, traditional cultures, all the African cultures, South American, you know they all consumed a lot of these conifer seeds. Hmm. These are your you know your junipers, your pines, your ginkgos and hundreds of others. And before the advent of modern cosmetics, what were they doing? They were smearing solves of these kind of conifer seeds onto their skin. Right. So that's how I got interested in all these. Oh. So the, the conifer seeds, when I started looking through traditional Chinese medicine books, and I'd look up ginkgo and a whole slew of other seeds, they always talked about these potent anti-inflammatory properties. Mm. And so we started, as part of my PhD work, looking at the molecular structure of the fatty acids. And they were missing one double. With that missing double bond, you're not able to form prostaglandins, leukotrienes, and the other eicosanoids. Mm -hmm. So it's really a quite interesting story. Before I ever did a single study, just by looking at the structure, I already knew that this would, would and should have potent anti-inflammatory properties. So because we had that earlier data I mentioned on the skin, we started applying it to uh, friends and colleagues and other professionals with psoriasis, eczema, um, wound, wounds, mm -hmm. and so on. And uh, we started finding rather striking findings. Um, and it started with a gentleman in Denmark. This is before we had any other data. He had a condition where he had these deep cuts between his fingers that would not he heal. Um, interdigital fissures, they call it. Mm. And so he applied the oil and they healed overnight. Overnight? So overnight. So then I got this excited call in the morning saying, what's going on here? The cuts <laughs> healed. So that was the first indication I knew that this was going to be very bioactive mm. as a topical. So then we've gone on and given it to people with psoriasis, eczema, people that had uh, problems with redness, wrinkling, and we keep seeing these striking benefits that, that happen rapidly, typically within one, one usage or two. My family, just to finish on the topical, like my daughter has this eczematic skin mm -hmm. and, you know, I put it on her. There's a picture in the, in the slide deck, you know, showing how the, this big red rash was taken down in a single usage. And the other thing on my son is the diabetics, most of them these days have these um, insulin pumps right. and continuous glucose monitors but they inevitably don't stay on. It's, it's an adhesive. Mm. So then you apply these very strong adhesives, mm -hmm. like a spray or a wipe, and it's on there real solid, which is what you want, but, but then the skin gets irritated. Yeah. So I've started using it on my son as a means to take care of that inflammation from the adhesive injury. Turns out if you look at the evolution of seeds, the so-called modern seeds are called angiosperms. Okay. The more primitive ones are called gymnosperms or conifers. And the ones people routinely know are your junipers and your pines and so on. But what really is fascinating to me, uh, just as a scientist, is the dinosaurs, which existed 70 to say 200 million years ago, did not have, they did not have these angiosperms. Hmm. So they were consuming these conifer seeds. And then from the fossil record, 
you can see that the types of conifers they were consuming had high amounts of skiadonic acid.